Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T, and if true crime is your jam, and like me, you enjoy delving into unsolved cases, trying to figure out who done it, please consider subscribing. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please hit that like button. Hello all, T here. Today I want to talk about a case involving a 19-year-old young man named Dylan Rounds, who vanished from his remote Utah farm back in May of 2022, so about two months ago. There are some people who are lucky enough in life to know what they want to be from a very young age and who follow that passion without deviation, arriving at their goal in record time. Dylan Rounds was one of those people. The son of Candace Cooley and Justin Rounds who divorced when Dylan was four years old. Dylan dreamed from a very young age about owning a farm and becoming a farmer. He grew up in Idaho with a younger brother and sister, and he and his siblings split their time between Idaho Falls, where their father Justin lives, and Twin Falls, where their mother Candace lives. According to Justin Round, Idaho life meant outdoor life for Dylan. He told Dateline that his son often went fishing and dirt biking, but that farming was the most important part of his life. Three years ago, at age 16, after dropping out of high school, a decision his parents were not happy about at the time, Dylan moved to a small town in the remote Utah desert called Lucen. Lucen is described as a place that draws people who want to live off the grid. There you'll find loners, people with criminal pasts, meth heads, and pretty much anyone wanting to fly under the radar. Because it's so underdeveloped, Lucen at night is pitch black, so dark that it even freaks out other farmers in the area. Once living in Lucen, Dylan worked for another farmer. Apparently, Dylan is very good at welding, and he used that skill to repair equipment on the farm. Eventually, with his paternal grandfather's financial help, Dylan purchased hundreds of acres of land in Lucen, where a running farm once stood. According to one of Dylan's friends, he thought at one point about having a pig farm, which would make for a rather pungent endeavor. Dylan thought that the remote Lucen would be perfect for that reason. No neighbors around to complain about the stench. Although Dylan had a farm, it isn't the type of farm most of us envision. Lucen is anything but green and lush, and there's no big red barn on the property. It's a farm in the desert. Desert, a farm where dust covers everything. Picture a dusty plain with no buildings in sight for miles and miles, and where, when the wind picks up, dust storms are prevalent. It's a brutal environment. Dylan spent his days cultivating his crop and his nights living alone in a camper on the property, a camper without running water. According to his mom, the 19-year-old had toiled for the last two years, ripping out and redeveloping the land. Despite his young age, Dylan secured water rights and was pretty much running the farm solo, aside from the occasional help of hired hands and some local friends. And this year, Dylan's hard work was about to pay off in a big way. The grain he planted was finally coming up. It was going to be his very first crop. That was the state of affairs when Dylan suddenly stopped communicating with his family, people he was normally in contact with daily, and all activity on his bank account ceased. Here's how the events unfolded. On Wednesday, May 25th, Dylan reportedly made several calls to relatives saying that he had a weird run-in with a stranger on a county road near his farm. Dylan's aunt explains what Dylan said about the incident. The man was walking down the gravel road barefoot. He flagged Dylan down, who was in his truck. He asked to use Dylan's phone and was acting erratically. Dylan felt the man was dangerous and may have been high. 
Dylan allegedly refused to give the stranger a ride. The next day, on Thursday, May 26th, Dylan was seen dining in Montello, Nevada at the Saddle Sore Bar, pretty much the only establishment near Lucen that serves food. The Saddle Sore Bar is owned by a lady named Sarah Berg, but it's leased by a man named Kurt Wadsworth. Wadsworth pays $1,200 a month for the space, but apparently he only opens it maybe once every three to four weeks. That Thursday evening was the last known sighting of Dylan Rounds, but Dylan did speak to each of his parents that day, telling his mother how excited he was about getting his first crop this year and talking to his father about different types of tractors that he was running. Two days later, on Saturday, May 28th, Dylan spoke to his grandmother at 6.51 a.m. and told her that he was moving his seed truck the five miles from his camper in Lucen to a nearby grain shed. Dylan wanted to get the seed truck inside because it had started to rain and he didn't want his seed to be destroyed. He told his grandmother, It's raining. I can't talk to you right now. I gotta get my seed truck. End quote. That was the last time anyone in Dylan's family spoke to him. No one realized Dylan was missing until Monday, May 30th. That's when Dylan's mother, Candace Cooley, received an alarming call from Dylan's best friend, J.D. Wild. J.D. informed Candace that no one had heard from Dylan since Saturday. Candace, upon hearing this news, said that she instantly knew they had a problem. Candace called the police to report Dylan missing later that day. Although she knew something was wrong, Candace didn't jump straight to a foul play scenario. She thought instead that perhaps Dylan was injured, maybe lying somewhere after being bit by a snake. She explained why she knew something was wrong to People magazine like this. I would go three or four days without talking to him, and then I'd talk to him five days in a row, but he was always in contact with somebody. So when we all put together that nobody talked to him, that's when we all headed down to the farm." End quote. When Dylan's family arrived at his farm in Lucen, they found his seed truck in the grain shed, exactly where he said he was moving it to. Within the first hour and a half of searching, they made a disturbing discovery. Behind a pile of dirt, they found Dylan's boots. According to Dylan's mother, Dylan was very particular about his boots. She said, and I quote, He wears a pair, and it's always the same pair. When they wear out, he goes and buys exactly the same boots, end quote. Knowing that those were Dylan's only boots, and he obviously wasn't wearing them at that point, was extremely upsetting to the family. Said Cooley, our hearts dropped. A kid doesn't go walking in the desert without his boots, end quote. Candace has maintained that the only footwear that Dylan had to wear were those boots. However, Zav Girl was sent a photo of Dylan in which he's clearly wearing white tennis shoes. So it appears that he did have other footwear options. It's unclear why his mother was so insistent about those boots being the only footwear Dylan owned. Adding to the family's worries was a stain on the boots. It was a small stain, a stain that Candace described as being like a small drip from a bloody nose. At first, Candace thought the stain was oil. However, when it was later tested by law enforcement, the mark was determined to be blood, although it still isn't clear if the blood belonged to a human or an animal. Note that the boots were found a hundred yards south of where Dylan's seed truck was parked, which is in the opposite direction from Dylan's camper. Dylan's father, Justin, told Dateline this about the moment they found the boots. Our brains were going in a million different directions. We didn't know what to do, end quote. When the family went inside Dylan's camper, everything looked normal, and there was zero evidence of any type of struggle. But they were unable to find Dylan's wallet, 
phone, and pistol. Also missing was the key fob to his 2015 Ford F-150 pickup truck, which was parked outside and locked. Candace Cooley told People Magazine that Dylan never locks anything, so that was very strange. In addition, the truck's exterior had clearly been power washed, but whoever did it failed to clean the inside of the tire wells because they were still caked with mud. That is also strange because Dylan would have washed that. It's my understanding that Dylan's father, Justin Rounds, broke a window to get into the truck, which, if there was evidence in there, probably wasn't a good thing to do. Cooley, after finding Dylan's boots, and seeing these strange signs of activity done by someone other than her son said this, as hard as it is and as much as I hate to say it, I'm about 99% sure someone murdered my son, end quote. While it's only been about two months since Dylan vanished, I think when a person who is in regular contact with his family and who's always working on his farm, when someone like that suddenly stops calling and is nowhere to be found on their property, it quickly becomes clear to the family that maybe the worst is true. So I don't think it's crazy in this situation to have a mother jumping fairly quickly to a worse case scenario. Candace Cooley was also very disturbed when she saw where the driver's seat in Dylan's truck was positioned. She told People Magazine the following, I'm 4 foot 11 inches. Dylan's between 5'10 and 5'11. The pickup seat was all the way forward to the point where I didn't even have to move it to drive it. And he was in four-wheel drive. And Dylan's four-wheel drive has been busted since this winter. He would never have put it in four-wheel. Somebody else drove his pickup. End quote. Cooley also stated that her son would never just run off. She says, and I quote, That kid was so dedicated. That farm was his life. You're talking about a kid who's got access to $60,000 for tractor parts and all kinds of stuff. And nothing, no money has been spent. Nothing's been touched. Nothing like that. I wish I had the comfort of saying, yeah, he's out gambling. I don't even have the comfort to say that because it wouldn't happen, end quote. Cooley and the rest of Dylan's family did the initial searches for Dylan. They even had Dylan's friend, Kurt Wadsworth, come out to the farm to drain a pond. Dylan was obviously not found in the pond. Cooley has said that the police did not get very much involved until three weeks after Dylan went missing, when, on June 15th, they finally called the case criminal. This meant that they lost out on critical days when they could have secured the farm and taken the various trucks into custody for analysis. Although once the police were involved, there were massive searches for Dylan by way of drones, people on horseback, and cadaver dogs. Nothing was found. For some reason, live scent dogs were not used in the search. On June 15th, the Box Elder Sheriff's Office stated that they spent over 300 hours searching, covering more than 3,000 miles. And apparently the land in Lucen makes for a rather rough terrain. It's more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. When the wind blows, the sand takes flight. Note that Lucen is listed on several websites as a ghost town and the barrens surrounding Dylan's property are riddled with caves and abandoned mine shafts. Sadly, like so many other missing persons cases, there are already rumors swirling in Dylan's disappearance, and there have been a number of false leads. The Box Elder County Sheriff's Chief Deputy, Cade Palmer, said this, Every time we think there's an open window, it's followed by a closed door. There are a lot of interviews that have happened, but no clear evidence pointing at anybody. If anyone knows anything about this, they aren't coming forward. They haven't given any indication that they know anything." End quote. Early on, Dylan's grandparents hired a private investigator named James Terry. 
but it appears that Dylan's mother got angry about some of Terry's theories, and so she fired him. The family now has a cease and desist order against Terry because he's been very vocal and very visible on YouTube. He's appeared on Zav Girl's channel and more. I would describe Terry as a spicy guy with New York bravado, and he seems to enjoy the drama surrounding the case. One of the issues I think Dylan's family has with Terry is that he's been talking about Dylan's sexuality and saying that Dylan was possibly gay. There have been allegations that Dylan might have been in a relationship of some sort with Kurt Wadsworth. However, Dylan's mother is adamant that Dylan was not gay and seems very upset to have that type of speculation going on. She's saying that she doesn't care if that were the case, but that it's not, and that it would have nothing to do with Dylan's disappearance. Personally, however, if Dylan was having a relationship with another man, I think it would be important to know about it but that's just my opinion. Note that another 19-year-old man disappeared recently from the same area. That would be a guy named Aiden Clune of Sonoma County, California. He's been missing since April 27th. Aiden traveled to Utah on April 26th, then drove back to Nevada and drove south on US Highway 93 the following day. He parked his pickup truck on the shoulder and wandered into the remote area about 10 miles north of a town called Curry. Apparently, Aiden's mission was to disappear into the mountains. Aiden hasn't been seen since. He has brown hair, brown eyes, is 5 foot 8 inches tall, and weighs about 125 pounds. Could Aiden and Dylan's disappearances be related? possibly. And sadly, as in the Summer Wells case, there are numerous shady characters on the periphery of Dylan's life in Lucen, people with disturbing criminal histories that the police are definitely looking at now as possible persons of interest. At least three people have been questioned by authorities in the case, and all three have criminal records. One was indicted on unrelated charges, another is in custody on an outstanding warrant, and the third man remains free. Local law enforcement is now working with the FBI, thankfully, and the case is now being called a missing person slash criminal investigation. So who are the controversial people who have connections to Dylan Rounds? Well, first is a 60-something Kurt Wadsworth. Wadsworth is one of three brothers who live in the area, and he's the guy who leases the Saddle Sore restaurant in Montello. Kurt is rumored to have been in a relationship with Dylan. However, Dylan's mother and father say they knew nothing about it, and Wadsworth denies the rumor. It's possible, though, that Dylan's parents weren't privy to his secret life. Maybe Dylan kept certain parts of his existence hidden from his parents. He wouldn't be the first child to do that. Kurt Wadsworth calls himself Dylan's friend and has said he just wanted to see the young man succeed because he was such a talented farmer and so hardworking. Apparently Kurt would help Dylan on the farm quite a lot. Kurt said this of Dylan. Dylan's a hard-working young kid who had a dream and asked me to be involved in it. I worked as a backhoe operator is all." End quote. Kurt Wadsworth lives in the town of Montello, Nevada, which is about 30 miles from Lucen in Box Elder County. And as I said before, he leases the Saddle Sore Bar, which he opens once every three to four weeks. Wadsworth said in an interview on another channel that Dylan would sometimes stay at his mobile trailer, which is parked behind the saddle sore. Apparently, if Dylan was in Montello dining and it got to be late, he'd prefer to stay in Wadsworth mobile home rather than drive the 30 miles back to the farm on dark, desolate roads. 
Also, the mobile home has water, so Dylan could take showers there. Wadsworth is quoted as saying this, If you don't have any faith in me that I know what I know, I am the one that is going to solve this thing. I know everything about Dylan. They know absolutely nothing about Dylan's life. End quote. Note that Kurt Wadsworth has been accused by some of being a secret cross-dresser. This is just a rumor, so don't take that as fact. Take it with a grain of salt. Then there's Kurt's brother, Scott C. Wadsworth. Scott was convicted of essaying a 14-year-old Utah girl who he met in an online chat room in July of 2003. He was 34 years old at the time. The two chatted online and on the phone. During their conversations, Scott Wadsworth sent the teen numerous images and video clips of an unsavory nature. On one occasion, he went to the teen's home and she performed a certain act on him. In December of 2003, Wadsworth was charged with 26 offenses stemming from his misconduct with this girl. In 2004, he pleaded guilty to numerous charges, but Wadsworth fled before his sentencing and was a fugitive until July of 2009 when Idaho police discovered during a traffic stop that there was a warrant for his arrest and they turned him over to authorities. In December of 2009, Wadsworth was sentenced to 1 to 15 years in prison and ordered to pay restitution. I believe Scott Wadsworth was paroled in 2015. The third Wadsworth brother is Aaron. Aaron was arrested in April of 2022 with more than 1,000 fentanyl pills in his possession. He's been charged in four separate cases in the past year related to drug possession and drug trafficking. In the end, he was indicted by the U.S. Attorney General's Office in Idaho and charged with two counts of possession of meth with intent to distribute and three counts of possession of fentanyl with intent to distribute. Then there's 59-year-old James Adrian Brenner who worked occasionally for Dylan and who was squatting in a trailer on land owned by a man named Don near where the grain shed is located. Brenner was Dylan's closest neighbor. Note that Brenner is believed to be around five foot nine inches tall and is quite heavy set, around 220 pounds. James Brenner goes by Jim, so that's what I'm going to call him. Note that Jim Brenner has an extensive criminal background with many serious charges, including driving under the influence, assault, assault with intent to murder and rob, malicious injury. Because Brenner is a convicted felon, he's not allowed to possess firearms. After learning about Brenner from a friend of his who's been identified by the initials D.H., Note that I believe D.H. is the Don person who owns the land that Brenner is squatting on. On June 16th, law enforcement served Brenner with a search warrant for his trailer. The friend told police that after Dylan disappeared, Brenner brought three muzzle loader guns over to his house for safekeeping. D.H., finding this suspicious, called the sheriff's office. Once at Brenner's trailer, the police discovered that he had guns, ammo, ignition caps, and four pounds black powder associated with muzzle loader firearms. It's also been said by Duty Ron that Brenner was allegedly wearing Dylan's hat. The FBI subsequently indicted Brenner for illegal possession of firearms which landed him in jail where he remains to this day. The FBI in their complaint wrote that Brenner was squatting in a trailer in Lucent, and on the day Dylan was reported missing, Brenner allegedly called his friend D.H. and told him that he was putting the seed truck into shelter." End quote. Why would Brenner be putting away Dylan's seed truck? According to Dylan's mother, 
Dylan told his grandmother that the seed truck needed to be driven into the grain shed, but he didn't expressly say that he was going to be the person doing that. So it's possible that Dylan asked Jim Brenner to do it. Apparently, Brenner did occasionally work for Dylan. On June 20th, the FBI interviewed D.H. D.H. told them what Brenner had said to him about the guns. Here's what the FBI special agent Jeremiah Folk wrote down in the complaint against Brenner. When friend asked why, Brenner stated he needed to do this for his own safety and that the last time he had trouble with the law, they took everything from him and he did not want the things he had left to be taken again." End quote. Note that Brenner has a prior felony firearm conviction that occurred in 2012. Brenner is scheduled for a hearing this Friday, tomorrow, and that may be concerning Brenner's possible involvement in Dylan Round's disappearance. A few other odd details about Jim Brenner. He apparently owns 10 acres of land right on the border with Idaho and Utah. Many are wondering why a guy with his own 10 acres is squatting on someone else's land. In addition, Brenner allegedly put up a makeshift gate of sorts, barring access to some land owned by that Don person. Brenner had a key to the gate, as did Dylan, allegedly. It is believed that Brenner put up the gate to make it difficult for tourists coming to see the nearby sun tunnels. In case you don't know, because I didn't know, the sun tunnels is a large-scale art installation in Utah's Great Basin Desert. It consists of four large concrete cylinders arranged on the desert floor in a cross pattern. The cylinders align with the sunrise and sunset on the summer and winter solstice. It's very odd to see such a structure in such a barren setting. Very unexpected. Now, it's been said that Jim Brenner did not like Dylan Rounds. This may be because Brenner occasionally worked for Dylan, and perhaps he didn't like taking orders from a 19-year-old, or it may just be because Brenner is rumored to be a jerk someone who allegedly enjoys taking punches at people. It's rumored that Brenner said he wanted to kill Dylan Rounds and bury him in the desert wash. Apparently Dylan wanted to buy the land that Brenner was squatting on, and if he had been able to purchase that land, he would likely have kicked Brenner off of it. Another man who is in custody in Davis County was stopped by authorities after he was seen carrying a rifle while walking on the road in Lucen. This occurred two days before Dylan disappeared. This same man allegedly flagged Dylan down while he was driving his truck in the area. The man was barefoot and bloodied and asked to use Dylan's phone and subsequently requested a ride. When Dylan later called his mother to tell her about the incident, he said that he declined giving the man a ride because he felt the guy might be dangerous and on drugs. After a few days, the man was reportedly seen in Montello, Nevada, inquiring about Dylan, and there are reports that he even got a ride out to Dylan's trailer on Saturday, the day when Dylan stopped communicating. This man has been identified as Chase Montgomery Venstra. Now, when Dylan's mother, Candace Cooley, appeared on Zav Girl's channel, she was saying that she later found out that Dylan had indeed given Venstra a ride that day. So Dylan lied to her, and it's probably because he knew she would have lectured him about the dangers of giving strangers a ride. So it appears that Dylan had more of an interaction with Chase Venstra than he let on to his mom. According to court documents, Chase Venstra was arrested on June 4, 2022 and taken into custody in the Davis County Jail for other unrelated charges. He had six different firearms in his possession, and because he's a felon, he's not legally allowed to possess firearms. He's currently facing extradition to Montana for an outstanding warrant. 
On June 8th, Venstra waived his right to an extradition hearing. A final review of the extradition is scheduled for July 8th in Davis County. Unfortunately, Chase Venstra has a rather extensive and disturbing criminal history. In February of 2016, law enforcement found Venstra hidden in the attic of a home in Clinton, Utah after an all-day standoff. The standoff started at 9 a.m. after police in Clinton recognized Venstra who had several warrants for DV, assault, and stalking. According to police, Venstra ran from them into a home. They believed him to be armed and he refused to come out. So the police searched multiple floors of the house before heading into the attic. Venstra was finally found under a layer of attic insulation, breathing quietly and holding very still. Venstra was not armed, although there were guns at the residence. He was apprehended at 6 p.m. Note that Kurt Wadsworth at one point called Candace Cooley to tell her that Chase Venstra was holding Dylan hostage in a house. Dylan's parents quickly arranged to have the house checked out and found nothing there. Kurt later explained away his call to Candace by saying that his daughter had gone to a psychic to see if she could share any useful information about Dylan. According to Kurt, it was the psychic who said Dylan was being held hostage. However that came about, it's suspicious that Kurt said that to Candace. Note that Candace isn't too suspicious about it herself. She's laser focused on finding whoever did something to Dylan. Candace doesn't seem to think Kurt Wadsworth had any involvement in her son's disappearance. Another man whose name has come up in Dylan's case is 38-year-old Robert Avila. Avila spent time in prison for burglary and assault with a deadly weapon. He was caught with meth in his vehicle and in his system. Apparently meth is a big problem in Montella, Utah. Avila seems to have been buddies with Chase Venstra. As of today, it appears that while Dylan's mother continues to push hard for answers, his father Justin left Lucen yesterday to head back to his home in Idaho. I'm not sure if that means he's giving up on searching for his son or if he just needed a break after more than a month of searching. Justin Rounds was also seen prior to leaving Montello parked outside the Saddle Sore Bar. It appears that he may have been watching the comings and goings of Kurt Wadsworth. Dylan's mother too is reportedly now back at her job at Costco. It's being speculated that perhaps Rounds and Cooley have returned to their lives because maybe the police feel that they have their suspects in custody. The family also released a statement yesterday asking the public not to do their own searches for Dylan because they say they fear such searches could hurt the case. However, that statement may be a sign as well that law enforcement feels they already have their suspect. Some people are speculating that Dylan's disappearance may have something to do with water rights and water usage. Fresh water is very difficult to come by in Lucid. Is it possible that Dylan angered others in the area because of his liberal use of fresh water to hydrate his crops? It's a definite possibility. That is my preliminary synopsis of the Dylan Rounds case. I will be providing additional information on the case and the people surrounding it as events unfold. Dylan Rounds is 5 feet 10 inches and weighs 160 pounds. He has brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with details about Dylan's disappearance is urged to contact the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office at 1-435-734-3800. 1-435-734-3800. You can also call the Missing in America Network in anonymous tip line at 1-844-MIA-1111.
lost. one 844 lost There is a $100,000 reward in place for information that leads to Dylan's safe return. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. Hey, on the way out, hit that like button!